So in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at adding a little bit of variation to our scene using a little technique called vertex painting. Now vertex painting is pretty easy in UE4 and it's quite powerful too. This video will contain the basic principles of vertex painting as well as then moving on to more advanced techniques. And even though in this video we'll be doing a nice bold stylized wall, it contains all the techniques you need to be able to do something like in this example where I'm painting out the plaster, it's crumbling away and letting those wooden boards kind of push through. So I've got this scene here that I've just quickly put together, like a little barn type scene. And you can see there's some uh, few materials in here that are kind of uh, repetitive. So, the, I mean, it's not a super repetitive scene, but I would like to start adding a little bit of breakup, particularly in these wall sections here, this clean wall section. Uh, and there's a few different ways I can do that. I can start adding decals. I can add a few different variations of textures made in Substance Painter, or I can start to blend across this using vertex painting. Uh, so a little example of what vertex painting is. If we come over here, I've got this piece of wall section here. Now if we just browse to that asset and take a little look at that wall section. So this wall section is actually cut into quite a few edges and that's to support the vertex painting because it'll be each one of these vertexes will hold a different RGB color and that will represent the texture that you want to paint across it. So if we just do a little example of this here, so we should close this. What I'm going to do is go to my materials and I'm going to create a new material. Okay, and in this new material, I'm just going to right click and type in vert and select vertex color. And I'm going to just plug this straight into the emissive or the base slot, it doesn't really matter. What we can do is go to modes. Now, depending on what version of UE4 you have, your vertex painting might be over here, but with the latest one, it's in this section here. So if we go to modes and then go down to mesh paint. So we select our mesh and then go to paint. Now we're just painting these vertex colors here. So to visualize that, I need to go to color view mode and change that to RGB. And then if we start to paint in this, so if I just deselect all these channels here, so we've just got the red channel and we swap the color here. So this paint color becomes black. I can start to paint in just that red channel there. And then again, if I switch from red to green, I can paint the green channel and then the blue and these will mix together as well. These will blend together as you paint in them. And if I want to remove it, I can simply change this paint color to white or even gray, or the fastest way is just to go up here and go to swap colors, and then I can start to remove that channel's colors, and it won't affect them other channels. And so we can use this to blend between different textures that we set up. So just to show you how that works, if I go to my textures and I pick a couple of textures here. Okay, so with our two textures in, we can create a lerp node linear interpolate and we can plug our plaster into A and our brick into B. Now uh, it's worth noting that the bottom one will be the one shown first and then the top one A will be the one that you paint in and then we can lurk between those two with the red channel from the vertex so we'll just plug that into base color and save that We can see here, we've got this brick wall with the plaster coming through. And if we just go to modes, mesh paint, select the mesh, make sure the paint color is on black and that red is the only channel activated. We can then begin to paint the uh, plaster on top of the other mesh. So now you can see that I can start to add some variations to the wall having this plaster come through these bricks. Swap color and I can remove it again. Now there is a problem with this. One of the main problems is that it is quite a soft blend between these two uh, pieces. Now this might be fine for something say like mud where you might want to blend subtle differences in between the, in, in between the materials or maybe soft dirt or dust but for stuff like plaster, it's not really ideal and it, it's kind of ignoring the shape of the bricks as well. So what we can do is go back to our material and we can insert a height map for the bricks, okay? So what we can use is a height lerp and we can plug our plaster into A and our bricks into B and then the results into the base color and we can take the vertex and put that into the transition phase. 
And the last thing it needs is a height texture. Okay, so now if you made your bricks in Substance Painter, as far as I know, Substance Painter doesn't have a good way of generating a uh, like a depth height map for stuff like bricks. Uh, you can generate that information from the normal map though and you can even paint your own because all you really need is the grout for example to be black and the bricks to be white uh, but if you have a normal map then you can generate one in something like Substance Designer that has a node to convert normals into height but also Substance Alchemist does it pretty well. So I've got Substance Alchemist here and what I'm going to do is drop my brick wall normal into the layer slot here and then I'm going to select Users Bitmap Okay, then I'm gonna click on the import image layer and change it from scan one to normal. And then I'm going to flick over to the 2D view. And I'm gonna make sure that height is selected here. And then I'm gonna click on add layer and type in normal. And I'm gonna select normal to height. Now I'm going to add another layer. So I'm gonna click add layer again. And this time I'm gonna select adjustment and in adjustment, I'm going to go down to the height section and I'm just going to play around with this until I get nice dark shadows in between and light bricks. And then once you've got something that you like, you can just right click this and go save as bitmap and find your folder, change it to ping and uh, give it a name and save that out. And then back in UE4, drag your new height map in and place it in your material and then hook that up to the height texture and save that. So now this, with this plugged in, if we start to paint this, you can see it's actually kind of coming in between the cracks and it's, it's using that height information to place the transition of the, the um, plaster, but it's still a little bit hazy. So what we can do here, go to our material and insert a parameter. So if you hold S on the keyboard and left mouse click, you can insert a parameter. I'm just gonna call this contrast. And then I'm going to plug this into the contrast at the bottom of height lerp. Okay, and then I'm going to save that. And then on the default value, I'm going to just scroll this up and down and you'll see that becomes sharper and more soft. And you can even invert it if you go all the way as well. So I'm just going to sharpen this up. Now if I come back to painting on this, you can see I've got much more control over how that blends with those bricks. So I've got the strength of my brush set to 0.5, so I can just kind of bring that in a little bit more slowly. And I can even just paint over this and maybe leave some bricks exposed. And the rest hidden. So you can see how quickly we can start to then add loads and loads of variants on the whim with this uh, technique. Now at the moment, this is just the base colors and we could do the same with this for each of our roughness materials and AO and everything, but this will start looking quite messy. So what we can do is use a make material attributes. So if we just go to make, type in make and find make material attributes, we have here um, a node that allow us to plug in all our base color and everything and give us one output. So I'm just going to drag in the rest of my textures. Okay, so I've dragged in the rest of my materials and I've created two of these make material attribute nodes and I'm just going to hook those up. So base color, normal. And with this one, it's the ambient occlusion, roughness and metallic. So base color, roughness and normal for this one. Okay, so unlike the other one, we can't use a height blend with this, the height lerp. So if you see, if we grab this, we can't plug it into there, it doesn't work. But this does give us an alpha and that's all we really need. So what we can use is a blend material attributes. And this pretty much just works like a lerp. So I wanna put my brick into B and my plaster into A. And then I wanna grab my height map again. So I'm just gonna find that there. And I'm gonna plug that into the height texture. And then we need a vertex 
color. And I want to put that into the transition phase, just like before. And then again, we want a contrast to go into the contrast here. Okay, and then we want to take the alpha from this and plug it into the alpha of the blend material attributes. And then we can delete what we made before. We just want the shader here. Now, at the moment, we can't plug this directly into here. So we need to select this and then go down to use material attributes here and tick that on. And then we get a single input. And then we can take the output from that and put it into material attributes there and then save that. Now, if we go back to our wall, you can see it's got the height information, the normal information, roughness and all the rest. And we can paint that in and out and you will get this nice blend between the two there. Now for this example, I probably wouldn't want to use normal on the plaster because it's a little bit too granular and this is quite a stylized environment. But one thing I can do to reduce that other than delete it is just to make it tile a little bit further. So if we open up our material editor again, and this time I'm gonna go over to the uh, plaster material. I'm gonna add a text texture coordinate and I'm gonna plug that into all the UVs of the plaster and then in texture coordinate, and I'm gonna increase the tiling, say by about three by three, and save that. So now you can see that tiles a little bit more nicely. So if we have a long stretch of this wall like this, so if we apply this material here, what we can do is go to our paint mode here and go to select and select all the pieces that we want to paint on. and then go back to paint. And of course, make sure it's in red. And then we can begin to paint across these with our new plaster vertex painting material. And you can go back into your material as well. Grab that contrast node and change that if you're not happy with the way it's blending. Now you can see uh, it doesn't look repetitive at all. We have clearly different parts of this wall. It's just such an easy way once you've set up the materials to just uh, be able to go across and paint different things. So here's an example of how to add a third material. Okay, so this third material is actually the plaster material because I want the very top material to be uh, the plaster. And what I've got here is I've got a mossy version of the bricks and I've got a clean version of the bricks. Okay, now I set them both up the same. The only thing I've done differently is I've added this height material here into world displacement for both of these. And then I've also added the height material into the height alert like we did before. So that goes both into world displacement and the uh, the height alert. And then that's plugged into the red channel, just like before. And then the alpha goes into a blend material attribute. But instead of that blend material attribute going straight into our final material, I've actually created a break material uh, node here. So unlike this one, which is make material, this breaks out that result back into its uh, individual channels. Except now these channels are the blended version of these two together. So really all I want is the height. So the height goes into here and we've also got a height into there. And then when we start painting with the vertex colors, that is then merged back together. And using this breakout material node, we can take this world displacement and we can use it as a secondary height to blend in the plaster. And the plaster is set up just like before uh, so it goes into a blend material and then we've got the second height lerp here again with a contrast and then that goes into the alpha and then that goes through to our final material. So all we're doing is kind of chaining these together. So we've got our first two for the red and then we've got our second one here which is 
the green channel. So now if I apply that to a section of wall here, you can see that we have this, uh, this green moss. So if I go back to paint, select that wall, and go in the red channel, I can start painting in this moss here. So I just maybe want to paint it along the bottom. And then if I want to start adding the plaster over the top, what I do is go to the green channel, deselect the red channel, and then start painting the plaster over the top of both the moss and the clean brick. All right then, so now if we go back to our little barn scene here, uh, we've got this wall section here. We can start adding some variation with this. So first of all, I'm just going to go over with the moss. So I've got my red channel selected and I've got white in there. So I'm just going to switch that so that I can start painting this moss in. Now these walls don't have as many vertexes here, so if you look, if I, if I, if I hover over here, there's not many choices of where I put this. Um, so if I wanted to make this a little bit more detailed, then I would just have to go back into Maya and add a few more vertexes. So you can see it's really noticeable on the curved section here. This curved section wasn't originally set up to start doing um, vertex painting. So it's only got vertexes at the top and bottom. So if I start to paint in this vertex at the bottom, you can see it'll blend about halfway up here. So that's not a big problem. I can go back and I can change that if I really wanted to. So I'm just gonna go across the bottom and put some moss in here. And then I'm gonna to switch to my green channel and start to paint in some plaster. Okay, so these walls definitely need a few more vertexes to hold this a little bit more nicely. And as you can see, it's a really powerful way to start breaking up that repetitiveness and just making much more interest to the scene. So I would also use this technique to add more dirt between these rocks here and also to maybe blend this kind of dirt into a tile floor like this. So as you can see, that's a really powerful technique and combined with decals and good set dressing, you really should be able to make any level look entirely unique. So I hope this was useful to some of you. And if it was, please remember to like the video and I'll see you next time.